Hello, hello everyone, and welcome on back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial on this small butcher house here behind me. This is another little villager house for our set of villager houses from over in our survival town first light. So it's a super small, simple, pretty basic build with just a bunch of little details designed to house a singular butcher villager in here in this little shop compartment where you can come in here, trade with him and you can keep a few chickens here around the side as well. Now we are just gonna speed run our way through this tutorial today, so let's head straight over to the block palette. All right, so everything you're gonna need for the exterior of the build is this stuff right here. So the main things you'll need are the oak logs, a bit of stripped oak wood, oak planks, oak stairs, spruce door, some glass panes, barrels, and of course, spruce stairs, slabs, trap doors, dark oak planks, stairs, slabs, trap doors, and some spruce fences, spruce fence gates. Then for your chimney, you'll want some stone bricks and a sight and stone and a few variants of those as in a few stairs of each, maybe a few walls of the different ones and some stone slabs, a campfire. Then these are some other extras for that bit more detail. So lanterns, chains, a few item frames, bit of raw chicken to put in the item frames for our sign, maybe a few eggs as well if you're interested in making our horn coral fan nests, a bit of coarse dirt, maybe a few hay bales and some dark oak buttons. Then the dimensions for today's little butcher house build is a 5x9 for the main body of the house and then an extra out by 4, 7 along for that little additional awning right there. And with that, let's launch into the tutorial. All right, and then to start off this build, grab yourself some oak logs and come here to this front left corner. We're going 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, just like that for this first little part of the frame. Then turning the corner, we're going across 1, 2, 3, then bringing another pillar up, across 1, 2, 3, another pillar up, turning the corner, another 3, another pillar, corner again, another 3, another pillar, and another 3 just to finish that off. Then coming here around the side, we're moving inwards 1 and out with a gap of 3, going 1 log right there, turning, gap of 2 and a log, gap of 2 and a log, just like that. Then with that first little bit of the oak logs in, we're going to start filling in our walls. So we're going to be texturing the walls with our stripped oak wood and mainly using oak planks. So I'm going to start by just filling it in in its base form. So this wall we're bringing up just like this, leaving a gap for the door with that stair right there so we can walk in and out. Then I'm going to break this up a tiny bit by adding in some stairs, something just like that. And then doing the same, breaking it up, but this time adding a bit of the stripped wood as well. So that is our first little front facing wall where our front door will be. Then turning the corner here we're going to be doing a window in this spot. So we're going stairs in both of these places and doing our little fill in of these blocks right here. Something just like that then again breaking it up with our stairs. So maybe just like that. Then right here is another one of our door slots. So doing exactly what we did in that front panel, filling it all in and then of course doing a little bit of that breakup as well. So there we go, that's pretty cute. Then here at the back we're doing another window. So again with our stairs in those two spots there and filling it in a little bit with all our blocks and breaking it up with our stairs. There we go. Then turning the corner here, this panel we're doing a little differently because we're leaving this right side of it for the chimney. So it's just these spots here that we're filling in and texturing. So again, filling it in, adding some stairs and breaking it up with a bit of that stripped wood. Then this panel here is pretty much exactly the same. It's a full fill in and then we are detailing and texturing it with the stairs and with our stripped wood. There we go, so those are the walls already done now and it's already starting to look really cute. Next, grabbing our glass panes, we're just gonna fill in our two windows and using our spruce doors, we can fill in the doors, but first I might grab a little bit of coarse dirt just to put under our doors. There we go, and then popping two spruce doors into those spots. Then coming over here to the awning side, using our spruce fence gates and spruce fences, we're going one, two, and three right there. Then fence, 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 and here at the back, fence, gate, fence again. Just because I find it convenient to have gates on either side, that's simply a personal preference thing. Then using our fences, one, two, three, on top of every single one of these logs. And then with our gates, we're connecting these up to the build. So one, two, three right there and connecting them up along this edge as well, just like that. 
Next, we're gonna start adding the roof frame onto our build. So first with our barrels, we're going one, two, three here on the front and one, two, three here on the back. Then using our spruce stairs, we're coming here to the left side and just starting by running these all the way along this edge of the frame. Then extending one past that point, we're coming up towards the middle, going upside down, stair, stair, upside down, stair, stair, just like that to this point, then upside down, facing that way, and a slab on top. Then coming around to this side, we're starting our stair here where our gates are and bringing it across one, two, three, then up again to meet in the middle. Then coming forward here, we're going one and two with our slabs and then running trapdoors all the way along this little edge of the awning. Then slab slab back again and into our stairs to mirror what we did over there, over here. Then once we're at that point grabbing our slabs, we're just connecting up the spine of our roof like that. And then we're going to be using our dark oak mix to fill in this roof. Now when I do textured roofs like this one over here, as you may know if you're familiar with my tutorials, I prefer to fill in the roof first, then texture it up. Feel free to just wait till I've already textured it, pause the video and copy my texture scheme if you find that easier. But for me, I'm going to start by just filling in exactly as the frame does with our dark oak here. So bringing our slabs in, in the space over the awning and using our stairs here in the main body of the roof just to connect up all the different segments of the frame. Then once our frame is filled in like this, I'm grabbing my dark oak planks and I'm just starting to break this up a little bit, I'm running them around through the roof, just like that, maybe something just like that, doing the same over here on this side. Then to texture up our awning, I'm grabbing my planks and I'm just kind of rummaging around, running these through this area, using some stairs as well. Maybe something just like this to bring this forward that extra bit because I just find it more interesting like that. Then we're using our trap doors once we have the roof kind of at this point here to add that extra tiny bit of dimension and detail. So running around all over the roof and just kind of adding these in both on the sides and on the tops of various blocks. Then your roof should be looking something just like this once it's all textured up and I think that's a very fun little roof. The build is already almost done because it's really a very quick and easy build, it's just a bit detailed which makes it look more intimidating than it is. Then coming over here we're going to start by adding the chimney. So andesite, stone bricks, stone and of course a few different variants of those in the stair slabs walls and we're just going to start by filling in this space here, bringing up one, two, three of our different blocks and popping a stair right there. Then up here on the roof, we are sadly gonna have to get rid of that, so I might just pop something in here to add that detail. Then we're going a block again, maybe a stair right here like this, then a block again here and another stair facing the opposite way right there at the top. So we're going up by four, just using a few stairs to add some more detail. Then down here at the bottom, we can actually bring this out by one and add a little stair there as well for some detail. Pop maybe a wall here on the side, a slab right there and another wall right there. Then back up at the top of the chimney, it is a campfire, wrapping our spruce trap doors all the way around it and closing them up, then throwing a stone brick wall there on top. Then with our little chimney done, still using our spruce trap doors, we're just gonna add a little bit of extra detail by running a few right there along the underside of the roof spine and coming around the side, we're also popping one right there and one right there. Also using our dark oak trap doors to come in here and just add a tiny bit of extra detail to the awning by running them along that side by the house. Then the next thing we're gonna do is add our little sign to the build. So using some oak, wood or logs breaking this stair right here, we're going one, two and barrel. Popping a dark oak button on the end of that barrel and using our spruce trap doors to go one and two just to add some more depth to the post. Then with our chain, it's one down from the barrel, piece of oak wood right there and a lantern underneath it, running our item frames, not like that, running our item frames all the way around the sides of that piece of wood and sticking some raw chicken in it. Then grabbing our lanterns, we're also doing one here on the front left corner of the build and one round here on the back right. Then the final touch that we'll be adding to the exterior of our little butcher house is doing up the floor over here in the chicken area. So I'm gonna be using coarse dirt, a few path blocks, some hay bales, a few spruce slabs, some water, horn corals and eggs to add the detail here. And I'm gonna start by grabbing a few hay bales and just kind of running a few of them around on the floor in here, something just like that. Next, we're gonna add some nests. So with the spruce slabs, what we can do is we can place a few of them into our floor, 
maybe these spots right here could be cute and we're gonna need to waterlog these. And what this does is it keeps our horn coral fans alive and colored so that they look like nests when we place them on. But before we do that, I forgot my item frames. Before we do that, we're gonna need some item frames and I might do these two here with eggs in them. So we pop down our item frames, you can pop some eggs into those frames, something just like that. Then with our horn coral, we can just click right here to place them onto the block and it looks like there's little eggs in the nests, also popping them on the other two spruce slabs. Then I'm just gonna add a little bit more detail by throwing around a few path block pieces, a bit of coarse dirt as well. And there you go, now you have a really cute little floor area in your chicken coop with just a bit of coarse dirt and paths scattered around and a few of those super cute chicken nests. And with that, the exterior of the build is pretty much done. So if you're gonna leave it there, definitely, I hope you enjoy the build. Feel free to have some fun with the path scheme. I use a coarse dirt path, spruce and oak plank path for builds like this, but use whatever you like, throw around some bushes, some moss, make a few tiny custom trees and you'll have yourself a really nice little build. And now if you're sticking around to do the interior of this build as well, this is everything you're going to need for it. So our floor, we're gonna be using some strip spruce logs, spruce planks, as well as some brown wool and brown carpet. And we're also gonna need oak logs, dark oak stairs, spruce slab, spruce trapdoor, oak trapdoor, spruce fence, a tripwire hook, some sea pickles, barrels, chests, crafting table, orange bed, smoker, campfire, some andesite, stone brick walls, and a piece of stone. Um, some flower pots as well as a few things to put in them. There'll be three flower pots total, so put whatever you'd like in them. I'm going to be using Oxide Daisy, Dandelion, and Azor Bluet. Then three item frames and a few things to put in the item frame. So I'm going to be using raw chicken, egg, and feather, and then just two lanterns. Now let's start with the floor in here. So we're going to just start by digging out our floor. Then I'm grabbing my spruce planks and my stripped spruce and I'm just running along starting to bring a bit of texture into this floor. Then I'm grabbing a little bit of wool and swapping a few of these blocks to the wall, maybe this, this, maybe one of those and something back here, maybe like that. Yeah, something just like that. I think it just adds a tiny bit of dimension and a little bit of extra detail into our floor work. Next, with our floor looking something like this, we're grabbing our oak logs, dark oak stairs, spruce slabs, and we're just gonna start by filling in this little space up here at the top of the roof. And then using our dark oak stairs, we're just gonna bring stairs along, skipping that one right there and all the way along on this side as well. Next, using our oak log to make a little crossbeam right here where these pillars are. And then next, we're grabbing some spruce trap doors and just going one and two there on that log to add that extra detail. Then spruce slabs right here at the front, so one, two here on the third. One, two of our slabs and a spruce trap door right there. Then count up two and it's a slab at the top of that second block. Trap door slab right there with spruce fences along the top of that. Then coming here to the corner, it's a spruce trap door and an oak trap door right there, and a barrel and a spruce trap door on top of the barrel on that side, as well as a spruce slab and another spruce trap door here at the top for a little shelf. And then here on this side, what we can do is we can grab an oak trap door and place it right here, leaving it open. Then we're gonna put a little hole into the floor, maybe just back that there with some spruce wood and throw a campfire there into that spot. Then spruce trap door on this side, spruce trap door on that side and a smoker on top of that a second smoker here in this corner then we've got a slab and a trap door and a trap door orange bed right here on top of those then crafting table right here another spruce trap door up here next to the window and then a slab and trap door up there at the top then using our walls right here oh as well we can knock out this log and put some stone in just to help that continuation of our stone chimney then it is wall 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 and stone piece just like that Then with a chest, we can pop that one right up there. Maybe a barrel here in this corner, tripwire hook on the end to make a little keg. With our lanterns, we can do one just up there and on this side, one up there in the middle as well. Then item frames, one, two, three there on the front. Flower pot here, flower pot here. Up here at the top, a chest and another flower pot. 
Then with our flowers, we could go an oxide daisy here maybe. I'm going to pop a dandelion up here and an azure blue it there on the crafting table. Then as well, we can put our signage up here. So I might go egg, chicken, feather in those item frames. Then with my sea pickles, I'm just popping two of them up here at the top just like that. And now before you move your villager in, it is worth considering that they will be able to interact with and use this door. They'll be able to let chickens into the house and cause trouble. I've just left it this way in first light because I don't mind a little bit of trouble. I think it's very cute. But if you'd rather not deal with the hassle, feel free to just get rid of that door and pop a gate in instead because the villagers are unable to interact with those. And as well, little tip, always remember you don't actually need to use this to get in and out of the area. Once your villager's in, just crouch and jump up and you are able to walk through this area where the trapdoor is, so it's a very safe way to get in and out of that villager area. And with that, your small butcher house is now complete with a full interior as well. I really hope you enjoy having this little build in your world. Enjoy trading with your little villager living in there. And with all that, thank you so, so much for coming along for the tutorial. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!